Okay, so again, if we look at it from uh, the reverse um, direction, router 1, um, if we look in its bindings and the, and the label information base, it sees that it's got a local binding of 16 and it's receiving a tag of 17 from router 2. <coughs> ISP router 2. So if we look at the forwarding table on ISP router 1, you can see that its local tag is 16 and its outgoing tag is 17. That's the tag it was receiving from router 2 for that prefix for the forward network. Now if we go to ISP router 2, look at the four network. It's generating a local tag of 17 for that network. It's receiving a tag from the router 1 for uh, at with 16. Remember, we go back to router 1 and its local tag is 16 for this network. Of course, router 2 isn't going to use this tag of 16 to reach the prefix, the 4 network, because it's not behind the router, ISP router 1. Uh, it sees a tag given from router 3, at, uh, a tag of 18 given from router 3. And it gives this route a tag of 17. As you can see here, as it router 2 hands off the label uh, tag of 17. And that's why ISP router 1 has the outgoing tag of 17. Because that's what router ISP router 2 is giving it. Um, so if we look at the forwarding table on ISP router 2 for the 4 network, okay, it's given it a local tag of 17, which we saw here, local binding 17, and it's sending that prefix to router 1. However, it is choosing the tag of 18 to send it when it receives anything from the 4 network. It's going to receive it. It's going to send it to 18. And that's because it's receiving a tag of 18, if you look here, from router 3. Now if we go to router 3, okay, almost done with uh, the MPLS here. This example, I know it's pretty confusing. But if we go to router 3 and we look, if we just look at this piece by piece, it, it makes it simpler. Um, if we look at router 3, the binding for uh, the 4 network, we're seeing it given a local tag of 18. Which it's passing off, if you look at router 2, which is the next router in line, uh, away from it. Remember, it's receiving a tag of 18 for the 4 network. from router 3, as you can see here. Now if we go to router 3, we look at it, that it's generating that tag of 18 for the 4 prefix. And it's sending it to router 2, okay? I'm sorry, it's receiving a tag of 17 from router 2, but it's not going to use that because that prefix isn't behind the four prefix, the four network is not behind router two, it's behind router four. Okay, so it's receiving a tag of 17 from router two, as we can see in router two. Remember, the local tag for the four network, shown in the forwarding table here, is 17. So it's passing that 17 label off to, to uh, router three. But router three uh, isn't using that. If we do a show MPLS forwarding table, uh, you can see that it is actually um, it has a pop tag associated with it means that it's uh, stripping the label off of the uh, packet and um,
sending it to uh, ISP Router 4 because if you remember ISP Router 4 is where that 4 in the network is located behind so ISP Router 4 is saying hey look strip the label off of this packet before you give it to me that way I don't have to do two lookups I don't have to do a lookup on the label and then do a lookup in the routing table and send it out my loopback interface since it's directly connected why don't you router 3 pop the label for me save the process and that's called again pen, PHP penultimate hot poppy so router 3 performs the PHP on the four network sends this uh, packet uh, unlabeled to router 4 and if you do uh, A bind, you know, look up the binding on router 4, it sees in pleasant mode because this network is directly connected. So by the time this packet gets back to router 4, router 4 has uh, all it has to do is do a lookup on the route and the routing table and forward it based on on that information based on you know it's directly connected loopback interface and that's it that's how the um, the label distribution works within our network here so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and, and uh, start putting these networks um, I'm sorry now what we're going to do is we're going to get a little more into the more complex um, topics. We're going to uh, configure uh, two-way route redistribution on both ISP Router 4 and Router 1 and we're going to go in uh, we're going to talk a little bit again about um, you know multi-protocol EGP. We're going to talk about uh, VPN version 4. We're going to be talking about uh, route targets, route distinguishers and uh, we're going to get these uh, these two uh, routers, the branch and the uh, headquarters router, we're going to get them uh, passing routes in between each other.